25 years after giving birth to the genre of gore grind and death metal, and 17 years after releasing their last album, Carcass comes back to become leaders of the songwriting within the extreme genre again. Carcass is a band that's very w well known for uh, working, for d developing two genres of music, uh, grindcore and melodic death metal. They actually created those, those two genres. Er helped create. They didn't do it by themselves, of course. Um, and they come from a very interesting scene, a very uh, prolific scene from the beginning of the 90s and early 80s, which is the extreme metal scene in England in the United Kingdom. Now what happened there is that during the 80s we had hardcore bands and metal bands developing more extreme sounds with the birth of thrash metal, death metal and so forth. And on the hardcore side of things, on the punk hardcore scene, uh, things were getting even more uh, fast, basically fast and dirty, aggressive, in the, in the sense of having a more dry sound. And what happened was in England, those things, get, those things, those elements got combined in a very unique way, and Carcass is the offspring of that combination. The label that started that, the label that coagulated everything, was Earache Records, a label from Nottingham in England, uh, which was owned and is owned to this day by Dick Person. Bands such as Neo. <laughs> As a social from Sweden and Larm. We're taking speed within a rock and roll format to new levels. It was all dissonant guitars, really fast and loose playing, but the speed was there. And then um, other bands got the powerful thrashing riffs of heavy metal, of thrash metal, and then of the genre that was being born, death metal, and combine those things together. So you have the, the, the riffs of Possessed. It's Celtic Frost. layer combined with the speed of Deep Wound and Neos and then you have Grindcore being born. So Carcass comes from a, 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 a new case scene, a British scene which had bands like uh, Heresy and Concrete Socks. And those bands were trying, were experimenting with those elements of speed and powerful heavy riffing. And they were doing it and creating a new sound, which actually is really born with Napalm Death, Napalm Death's first album with Scum in 1987. Well, Carcass, in a way, took things to a new level with their album, Reek of Faction, from 1988. And like the, the production is horrible, the lyrics are the most extreme you can imagine, the artwork is just pieces of bodies everywhere. Uh, but but from, from that scene, from those experiments, it was born a genre, two genres, death metal and grindcore, which Earache spearheaded with Roadrunner Records as well. But Earache was the gateway, was the, the, the threshold through which all these bands went through. And on the other side, a genre that spread throughout the world came out. Politically engaged as punk, but with powerful music as metal. Now the, the creative relevance of Earache is, it cannot be underestimated. It's, that's a label that concentrated a big level of talent and you had people doing industrial metal there uh, with Godflesh creating the genre.
Morbid Angel, Carcass, and Napalm and other bands doing death metal, Boat Thrower, another very good example of pioneers of death metal there. Uh, Stoner Metal with a band like Sleep, the American band. And even avant-garde kind of grind experimental things with John Zorn releasing Naked City and Painkiller, another crossover of grindcore with jazz influences. John Zorn, the, the uh, New York sax, sax, sax player, doing, doing work with that label. An underrated band from Iraq is OLD or Old with Jimmy Plotkin, a brilliant guitar player, and uh, Alan Dubbin, both uh, really, really good musicians who use the, the template of metal to create something really avant garde, especially with Low Flux Tube, their second album. It's a really, really good, interesting album. So Iraq was this concentration of experimentation within extreme music, uh, a very important moment in the history of, of rock music and of extreme music in general. And Carcass was there when this happened, and they became one of the most important death metal bands ever. Well, Carcass started, if you listen to the first album only, you're gonna, you're gonna think this is not gonna go too far. Uh, it's walls of noise and blast, it's really badly recorded, even the band acknowledges that nowadays. And the riffs are okay, the band could even re-record that album to see if they can get something out of it, but it's not, it's not their best. But the second album, Symphonies of Sickness, you can see a, pro a clear progression. The songs are better structured, Colin Richardson is brought into the production, and the, re and the message starts to make more sense. You, you, you kind of start getting what, the, what type of grind death they want to do. Now, the, they really find their voice in necroticism, the scanning the insalubrious. That is the true, the first true, uh, proper, car, technical carcass album in which you can see that the production is is found. They finally know, in in worldwide, people finally discover how to produce a death metal album. Right? It's uh, the, the the studio people know how to tweak and to tune the instruments and the gear to produce that sound, to make it smooth and powerful. And the band is as sharp as you can get, like the blast beats of Ken Owen are perfect, the melodic solos and riffs of Peel are absolutely astounding. Well, they reached a, a, a commercial and a critical success with Hard Work, their fourth album which was released in 1993. This is a time in which grindcore is new, death metal is new, uh, bands are releasing records left and right, Sepultura, Brutal Truth, Obituary, D-Side, all these bands are releasing albums, death, the, probably the best death metal band ever. And the genre is in a, in a, in a role, it's, it's happening. So they released the album in 93, they sell quite a bit of album. They have lots of critical recognition and they end up being hired by Sony Columbia in a deal that Eric made with Sony. And Napalm also was in that deal, Godflesh was in that deal as well. Well, Sony is looking for the new grunge. They're looking for what's the new big thing in rock. Well, as it happens, it wasn't death metal. Like the bands didn't sell as well as Sony expected them to and they all had to be dropped. You know, the, the, the labels weren't investing anymore in bands that weren't selling. They got to make really expensive videos for hard work. Napalm did a very expensive video. God Flash was in a Hollywood movie. It didn't work. The bands didn't sell as, as well as the label expected. So what happened, Carcass was actually stuck with Columbia and not back in Eric for a while, having a record they couldn't release, Swan Song. That record was made in a time in which bands didn't want to repeat themselves. Death metal was growing, was evolving. So bands were releasing different albums that tried with different soundscapes all the time. And they, they, they tried to focus on the death and roll genre, like a rock, 70s rock influenced metal, extreme music. And it worked. Swan, Swan Song is a very good album. It's different from anything they had done before. 
but the record was released in a time of turmoil for the band. And the band split up. So the record is stuck, there's no more band anymore, they release it, they don't tour for it, the promotion's not very good, it's a very bitter end for this band. And Bill Steer, the main composer of Carcass and the guitarist, he was so disillusioned with the extreme metal environment that he went and made a Led Zeppelin cream kind of band, uh, Firebird, which released many very good successful albums during the last 10, 12 years. But the flame of Kark has still burned inside, still burned inside the guys, and they were decided to get together and start touring 2008. And we're going to talk about the fact that they decided to release an album 17 years after their split on the next section of this video.